All right, if you're watching live, we're just doing some uh, weather charts. Well, here's the low pressure system over Texas. That's moving to the northeast. That's uh, we got warm air advection ahead of that low onshore flow, just pumping the moisture into the Gulf states, and then this low pressure system pushing through with a um, cold air advection to the backside. But an unstable wave just moving through causes the lift. We already have the moisture instability. We just need the lift, and then we have all the ingredients we need for severe thunderstorms. So I'm going to do my charts. Uh, I typically save these charts. So I'm just going to go ahead and build my charts uh, from the surface all the way up into the upper levels. And you can just watch along. If you have anything to say, just uh, type it in the chat, and we can start chatting. Doing another service chart now with the, I'm going to throw the computer generated fronts on this one. So you can see high pressure off the east coast. Looks like a frontal boundary right there stretching through uh, North Carolina and Virginia. So that's probably the lift right there we were getting with uh, the southerly flow and pushing up over that front. And that's what was causing those uh, tornado warnings we got in northern North Carolina, southern Virginia. And then we have this low pressure system over Texas with uh, showing a little bit of a cold front there. I'd say that's more all warm air right there and then the cold front stretching back to the west with the warm air this is looking stationary um which okay we can call it stationary it's barely moving so look at our wind directions we got winds out of the southeast and then going a little bit more easterly temperatures well, looks like it's a little cluttered hard to tell there's an 80 that looks like an 80 get up in here and get to 76 so not much of a temperature difference uh, through that area but that uh, all that moisture instability and lift that's everything we need right there for uh, severe weather we'll pop radar after we finish the charts and then see what other systems are pulled up building a thickness chart now it's a thousand five hundred millibar thickness chart This one's got to process a little bit of data, so it takes a little bit of time.
know, do export these charts as I go. So I'll save them all uh, pretty much on a daily basis. Now we're going to go up to the 850 millibar level. Okay, we see that moisture down along the Gulf States being pumped in. Moisture all the way up into the Carolinas, pretty much the east side of the mountains. Dry slot, uh, pushing up into the Ohio Valley. Um, this is at 850, 850 millibars, but we did have some thunderstorms pushing into central, uh, just south central uh, Ohio, about the Dayton area um, earlier. We had just a little bit of line pushing through there. Okay, now we're going to go up to 750 millibars. Sorry, 700 millibars. Okay, any of the moisture you see on here is 60% humidity or more. So we know we have uh, stronger humidity in these upper levels where all these storms are in the south and then in the northeast. So these charts are from a little bit older. And like I said, this is only 60% humidity. We got 100% uh, humidity to the south. And uh, along the Gulf Coast, all that warm moist air being pushed in. And then uh, also... To the northeast so there's a lot more moisture than what these charts indicate because these charts only come out every 12 hours i have 700 millibars now we're going to go to 500 So after we're done with the charts, we'll pull up the uh, radar and we can do another, see what warnings have popped up since then and uh, then do some analysis on the radar screens. These charts take a few minutes to build, so. There's 500. Now while I'm at the 500, I am going to do a vorticity chart this is so show us upper level divergence and uh pretty much upper level divergence for the most part but it is an indication of rotation to basically areas of low pressure so we know we got that low pressure system over texas moving to the northeast that where the positive vorticity detections ahead of that Now 
now we'll go to the 300. We'll do uh, one chart for the 300 on the moisture. If it's not too significant, then we'll just go pull the jet stream from this point. Yeah, we don't have really any significant moisture over the U.S. We do have some to the northeast, just off the east coast, and then to the southwest, that's over Mexico. So we're not going to pretty much worry about saving these too much. We can see the jet stream there. we got a 50-knot wind, and, but you can definitely see that, that troughing in the upper levels for the upper level support of that low-pressure system we had over there in the uh, Midwest. And then the 50-knot uh, winds, 75-knot winds. We have the subtropical jet. looks like it's down to the south. And then maybe another finger of the uh, polar front jet to the north. All right, so we're going to pull the uh, jet stream. All right, so there's the lower finger to the south. There's one to the north. We're going to, we'll just put some streamlines on here just to see. You know, definitely what our flow is. We look like we got some confluence possibly down in the south into the uh, southern states. We build these separate. I don't have any uh, scripts to run on these, so I just build these from scratch. So we have an upper level low over Nebraska. Looks like upper level low over West Virginia. Isotherms, they're pretty much parallel, for the most part, parallel with the uh, isobars. We run these streamlines. I'm going to take those off and I'm going to save it with the streamlines on there. But that just gives an idea of, this, uh, of the jet stream flow. That's pretty parallel. Um, nothing real significant. We do have some trophy to the north. Weak trophy, weak trophy along the Gulf Coast. But we do have jet support over this low. Anytime you got 50 uh, knot winds plus um, and with that jet stream with the low pressure system over Texas, then you can get, that could suck the mass out of that low and cause that low to intensify and then uh, cause it to deepen and become a more well-developed low, causing those storms to become more severe. All right, so that's the 300 millibar level. Now we'll go to 250. We'll do the same thing with the jet stream. Get a better picture of the jet stream in the higher levels. So you have warm core low, just a warm core, uh, warm pocket um, in the upper levels with this 50, negative 50 degrees. We get negative 52 out here, so that's colder. So we get a warm pocket right over uh, Nebraska, right where that trough was. That's where that uh, low pressure system was. That, we got the troughing over West Virginia also, the upper level low. So this upper level low is uh, pretty much the cause of that severe weather we had along North Carolina and Virginia border earlier. And now we'll do one more chart for the uh, constant heights. That's 200 millibar level. That's uh, We're going all the way up. At this point, we're about 38,662 feet. Now 
definitely see the strength of the subtropical jet. Then the uh, polar front well to the north at this height. Okay, so that's pretty much it for the constant height and the surface charts plus the thickness. What we can do now is we can go run a script for low level wind shear. What we want to look at on low level wind shear, I'm expecting somewhere around the Gulf states, maybe in North Carolina, West Virginia, where there's lows, or just to see what kind of. Right there's one over Ohio, one over uh, Mississippi. It's pretty weak right now. So um, yesterday we had a pretty strong area low-level shear I'm expecting that to come back though with uh, with that low pressure system developing and it starts pushing to the northeast I would expect the any low-level shear to start coming back on the um, with that low-level jet over the southern states to uh, pretty much cause that those thunderstorms to become way more intense because the uh, models are showing that that system becomes pretty well developed and then just severe weather throughout the weekend all the way over to Georgia. And we'll do a mid-level shear. Now we got some mid-level shear in the uh, along the Gulf Coast right there, so that's a pretty good indicator where that low is. Now we'll do a surface uh, frontogenesis, it'll show us where the uh, basically where any vorticity is, any frontal systems and if these frontal systems are going to become have a chance to become more intense or weaken so you can see over texas that low pressure system and any frontal boundaries associated with that low are going to undergo frontogenesis which is the intensification of those fronts there's the low there's the stationary front coming into that low and then there's looks like a stationary front right along that mountain range so that's probably just picking up right along the mountain range, seeing some different data in the mountains and just interpreting a uh, stationary front there. Now with the high pressure here, you could probably have a little bit of a stationary front coming into North Carolina, Virginia. And the main reason I say that is because of those tornadoes we got along the border there. They were um, pushing uh, up over that front, causing that lift. So now we go into more of a uh, chart with stability into another advection chart for indications of where thunderstorms may occur. Okay, so the only area I'm showing is down in the south, way off uh, the east coast of Texas right now. But that's not, this is a pretty accurate. Let's go, uh, we can go, I got one more model I can run on this that's uh, a little bit more intense. Sometimes it's too intense, but since I'm showing some weak advection, sometimes I bump it up a little bit to uh, pull out a little bit more data to show the little bit stronger areas. There we go. So now all along East Texas and uh, Louisiana, then some slight areas of Alabama, Mississippi. So 
that makes a little bit more sense for chances of severe weather. And that's right there along the uh, North Carolina, Virginia, and along the mountain range. Any precipitation that happened in there, any convection, that would have a pretty good chance of being coming severe. So we did see tornado warnings along North Carolina, Virginia earlier. So it's, this does fall in line with that. Okay, one more thing we'll do is uh, we'll do a lapse rate. If we look for anything with lapse rates above seven, seven or above, that's where we can pretty much indicate the more severe weather. Six, uh, six degrees Celsius, 6.5 degrees Celsius is a standard lapse rate on a stable atmosphere. So anything at seven or above is, uh, that is when you get into the pretty unstable areas. So earlier, this is older data. So it's been downloaded. So um, right along North Carolina or Louisiana and eastern Texas, we do have that lapse rate of seven or greater going into that. So we get, you know, as that low pressure develops or moves to the northeast, then our instability will move with it. And when you get those steeper lapse rates, then you definitely have uh, real good chances of severe weather and uh, tornadoes. So. All right, that's pretty much it for that. Let's go to... Uh, Let me go to some radar. The screen went black for a second. All right, now there's defaults in Ohio. We got all the all the station uh, plots up. Let's go. We got a tornado warning in Oklahoma, and Creek in Tulsa counties. So let's go pull that one up and see what we're working with there. Severe thunderstorms all in that area. Right there in uh, all through Oklahoma, right through Tornado Alley, pretty much. So, um, we got here hail, one and three quarter inch hail, and so this is another level of hail. We got a one inch down there. Can't read the one behind that two inch. Let's get zoomed in here. One and three quarter inch, and then there's a two inch with the red symbol. All right, so here's our. Severe thunderstorm. That's all. Severe thunderstorms, a whole line going through there. Some pretty high intensities to the south. <coughs> and then, um, let's see, here's our tornado warning. Let's go ahead and play that loop. All right, so we got that cell moving pretty, pretty rapid to the uh, east northeast. And then they throw the warning up right there on the last shot. All right, let's see what we got here. Pause that. We're on the last shot there. Now, first I want to do a cross section on this thing. We got pretty intense uh, updraft. Let's drag this around. I'm not really hitting a lot right there. Let me see it swing it. Move it along the storm. This is about the most intense right there. I mean, we're pushing 50 dBZs in a real small area up to 20,000 feet. So, you know, pretty much right there. But. That's kind of weak to me. Let's leave this one over here. Actually, let's go a little more than that. We're doing cross sections here. I'm looking for a volume scan. So, here we go. Now we're pushing up to 20,000 feet in a little bit wider area to the north. Let's go do a different cross the, uh, section here. All right, that's pretty much it. I mean, I'm not too impressed with that, but let's do a volume scan. Um, they got to be seeing radar uh, rotation or something on radar. Actually, let's go look and see. Um, I don't see any at that level. Well, I don't want to do that. Let me go get my pointer back and let's see here. Radar is to the northeast. Where's our radar actually? Right. Okay, right there. Just to the northeast of that warning. So this storm is headed toward the radar. So 
So we got some brighter colors there, but we don't have any uh, red. So we'll go up to the upper upper shot of this. So now in the upper levels, you can start seeing seeing the red. That's uh, going out away from the radar, and then the greens are going in toward the radar. So we do got some rotation there. I mean, there's some isolated stuff in the upper levels. Here's some gate-to-gate -gate shear right there. And this is at a uh, 3.1 degree angle on the radar. It's right around um, 11,392 feet. 11,400 feet on that side of it. So we definitely got some rotation there. It's probably why they threw the tornado warning. That's about 11,000 feet, so it hasn't reached the surface yet. Let's go in the upper levels. So we go way up in the upper levels, it just disappears. Now, we're at ten, a 10 degree angle on the radar. It's outside of the uh, beam, which we still got rotation there. Then we come down, we got some pretty intense rotation, uh, 8 degree angle. And then it gets a little bit weaker as we come down back into that warning area. And then just pretty much you got your gate to gate and we disappear uh, right around 1.8 degree angle on that. And that's, let's go back up. There's our strongest stuff. Now we're pushing uh, 29, 30,000 feet. So 30,000 feet, we got real intense uh, rotation. So if we can pull up another, another scan on this thing, let's do a 3D scan. All right, so we got that backed off pretty good. I'm gonna go ISO surface. Now we got uh, still 50, probably 50 dBZs at 20,000 feet. You can see the uh, this pretty much pretty horizontal on that updraft, and then it comes up to the uh, northeast side of that storm. We can add. All of our volume into this screen now once we get into the lower reflectivities you can just see that the lower reflectivities kind of just outline the storm so if you go down we look at this we got an overshooting top here overshooting top back there so like so we got the horizontal uh, angle and then overshooting tops right there about 35 got, um, go ahead and tell me on the screen about almost 40 about 40,000 feet for the overshooting tops then we get to the higher re reflectivities, get to the center of that storm. And now, once we hit the 50 dBZ mark, then that's where we're pushing up to over 20,000 feet on the uh, northeast side of that storm. The southwest quadrant, um, pretty weak. We do have that. I mean, it is 50,000 feet above 10,000. 50,000 dB. 50 dBZ is above 10,000 feet, so we're, you know, we are pretty intense there. But let's go to. Uh, rotation now here's some rotation that we were talking about all the way up to 30,000 feet pretty much up to 40,000 and we're all the way down to you know a couple thousand feet on the ground so I mean this is pretty intense rotation right there that's what the radar is picking up to say hey the, you know um, rotation indicated by radar and they threw out the tornado warning so definitely justified by that. And bring the high rate reflectivity on that too, but that doesn't really mean a whole lot. And let's see what we got here. bring up that whole volume and like I said you can see most of your intensity intensities are down and then you have your overshooting top so let's go pick another cell let's go get on something else here let's go with that cell just over Bixby got uh, upward vertical motion um, got an angle We get rid of a lot of this. Take that to 50 dBZs, and you get you really don't have a whole lot you're working with. And then the rotation on that one, you know, just real weak in the 
when the upper levels. Let's go read the warning and it has been it is canceled. The tornado tornadic thunderstorm which prompted the warning has moved out of the warned area. Therefore the warning has been canceled. So no longer to worry about that one. Although do a cross section on this. Yeah, I mean like I said it wasn't too impressive anyway. You know, we had the fifty DBZs above ten thousand feet, which is severe. You pushing up to twenty thousand feet and you can get some you can get some hail. Um hail size and winds uh, pretty much indicative of a severe thunderstorm. But we're still in that th that huge thunderstorm warning there, so severe thunderstorm warning. So Tornadic activity is uh, pretty weak there. And that's pretty much it for tornado warnings. We go down, uh, break down some of these cells. <clears throat> we can just go through here, look for higher reflectivities. Here's one. Um, let's go to a cross section on that real quick, just see what we're working with. Wasn't much of a cross section. Let me get a more intense section there. I mean, we got, I mean, it's still not too impressive. I mean, we still got 50 dBZ above 10,000 feet, so we are severe. We are in the severe warning. We're looking for something that could produce tornadoes. 50 dBZ, let's go. Got a little bit of upward vertical motion. Pushing up to about almost 20,000 feet, about 18,000 or so. Um, and then rotation. Got pretty good rotation in the upper levels there, too. So, kind of isolated in throughout that cell. Just scattered areas through there. But um, we do have rotation up to 30,000 feet. So, that one's pretty intense. A little bit of a hook there. Possibly have some inflow right there into that storm. So that thing could become something. Let me get, uh, get out of there. Get my pointer back. There's another one to the north. <coughs> Alright, so. It's a pretty good one there. Let me get out of that. Uh, All right, we got an updraft. Let's see where we're pushing there, about 18,000 feet. For the 50 dBZ mark, you can see the structure of that, the 50 dBZ uh, reflection there. So let's go pull this back. And in the green, you're at um, pretty much 30 to 40 dBZs on that green. You're pushing all the way up to 30,000 feet. So well, we definitely got some... A pretty strong updraft. Put the rotation on that one. All right, a little bit less scattered than that last one, so we got some rotation closer to 10,000 feet. A little isolated areas at about 20,000, and uh, then just some weak rotation up about 40,000 feet. But nevertheless, it is rotation within the storm, so. These things could uh, pretty much develop pretty quickly, and warnings can pop up at any time. Like I said, we're pretty much in the uh, in those warning areas. Some of that, a lot of that stuff's out. So here's hail, 0.43 inches, indicated by radar. Um, see, here's a weather station, 68 degrees, 61 degree dew point, and we are. Calm winds, last reported, 0030Z, and that's a thunderstorm scattered at 5,000 feet over cast 6,000 feet. So our bases are five to 6,000 feet. Um, why they, if they have a, they're running a thunderstorm in their observation, I guess that says auto, so it could be a, a ASOS doing that. But say, um, typically when you're running a thunderstorm on your observation, if you're running scattered 5,000 feet, then 
then you need to indicate at the 5,000 feet level or the 6,000 feet level which one is your cumulonimbus cloud. So it should say scattered 050 CB if that's the base of that cumulonimbus is at 5,000 feet. All right, we just had a bunch of hail pop up 1.32 inches right there. We're uh, 1.30 inches. This all indicated by radar and three quarter inch hail to the south. And that's uh, they're not throwing out any severe warnings there. I think uh, National Weather Service warnings are going to be about an inch on the hail to be considered severe. But if you look at these little hooks right through here. There's nothing, we're not even in a severe warning area here, but you have that little S curve. So, kind of kind of got some inflow coming in here and in there. Let's pull up a uh, base velocity. I mean, you can see it right there. Coming in toward the radar, out from the radar. So, definitely looks like rotation right there to me. Um, let's do a cross section on that. Isolated cell, um, still 50 DBZ is at 10,000 feet. And you can see your updraft blow off uh, Cirrus between 20 and 30,000 feet for the anvil. So that's definitely, you know, it is a thunderstorm cell. And then let's do the 3D scan on that one. Make sure I'm still connected here. <coughs> All right. Um, let me get. Higher DBZs. Now we're pushing 50 DBZ up to 20,000 feet. You can see the tilt of the storm. Pull that to the lower levels, the lower uh, reflectivities. That's the outline of the storm. There's your higher heights right there. Overshooting tops to over 30,000 feet. <coughs> All right, getting ready to uh, talk too much here, man. I got a <coughs> itchy throat. All right, so you see that lower DBZ? That's just lower reflectivity um, that's outlined in that storm. So that's reflectivity from the radar. We're just taking one one scan from that. So let's go begin to the uh, higher reflectivities, and then you start seeing that structure in the center of that storm. Once you get into the greens, about 30 to 40 DBZs on that reflectivity, it's pretty... Uh, Pretty decent precip right there. So if we go to, let's just going up for now. If we can go to the oranges and then get into the 50s. Anything 50 above is pretty much um, the severe reflectivity of that storm. We're pushing 50 above 20,000 feet. So we do have a pretty strong updraft there. But if we go to uh, some echo tops, then we can go pull up these cells and uh, see what the tops of these things. 37,000 feet. 33,000 feet, 35, 36, all the way up to 37,000 feet there. Right around that radar, that's just the angle of the radar, picking that up, and that's just, uh, that's why you see the stepping and all that smoothness. So any, the closer you get to the radar, it's a blind spot right there. So, like I said, 37,000 feet, I mean, we're cranking pretty good right there over Cedar Crest. All these reflectivities um, above 60 DBZs, I mean, we're, we're pretty good there and especially with that that curvature like I said with that base velocity you definitely see that rotation let's go up to the uh, go down to the surface first I mean we got we're all the way down to 0.5 degree tilt on the radar still got inflow and outflow and then you push it up into the mid levels still got rotation still got rotation right there at Cedar Crest still seeing the green and that's all the way up. I mean, we're pushing pretty good. So, like I said, if we get uh, do another 3D on that. And then pull the rotation. Now we're going, uh, that's pretty weak. I mean, we do have rotation up all the way up into the upper levels. All the way up to 40,000 feet. Just weak rotation. But there's pretty intense in the mid levels there, 20,000, 30,000 feet. I mean, that's not like sort of mid levels, but that's upper levels. But um, all the way down to the 10,000 foot levels, though, I'd say uh, that's pretty intense. Um, 
something to keep an eye on. I, I don't know. I would probably expect a warning if that thing keeps intensifying. The radar may just pop up a warning for the National Weather Service that there's something out there. But right now, it's even outside of the severe thunderstorm warning area. <coughs> All right, so let's go to. Area to the north, a little bit of hooking, uh, maybe some outflows, uh, let's see, squall lines. There's a lot of just scattered stuff through here. Here's your line right there. That's definitely going to be in the severe area. So looking for any kind of hooks on that, any hook echoes throughout that storm. So definitely got this has got overshooting tops all the way up to about fifty thousand feet, so it's pretty intense for that line. What I like to see is like we go to that go to those charts. See where our front is. Let's pull it up real quick. Get you on the same page here. So right now I'll pull up the surface pressure. Sea level pressure. Low pressure. Look at ridging into that low pressure and then just onshore flow. Troughing into the north over uh, up into Arkansas. Throw the isotherms on here. Definitely see the advection. throw surface plots on there just yet I'm not there we go had to back it off a little bit when it overcrowded so bad we wouldn't be able to see it all right we're taking its time all right we still got winds out of the north of 30 25 30 knots then we got low level convergence right over there over central Texas Onshore flow about 10 to knots and then moving more southeasterly. So if we look at our fronts though, I want to see. Throw the computer generated fronts on here, but here we got, probably got a front right through there, right through that trough because of the way that wind direction changes. So showing a trough right there, but I would say that stationary front probably pushes further down into that, um, where that convergence is. When you get two different directions of a on the surface like that, you got to have a front, something separating them. I mean, this is showing a trough, but there's some sort of boundary right there. So when you get look at them boundaries, then you go up to the 850, which this may not show. I'm gonna go to uh, let's go up to the 925. See if this one comes out. We'll do a uh, balanced pressure, balanced height field. Let's see what see what kind of support we have for that low we're at uh, 925 millibars about 2500 feet so it's not too high about halfway up to uh eight eight hundred fifty millibars so if we can cut that storm in half right there then we definitely can uh get a better picture of what the upper front is doing but then how steep that front is if any of the weather is at or behind that front or ahead of that front with that squall line looking the way it is i would say that, that if there's a front pushing through there or the leading edge of that system which is kind of plowing that weather plowing all that moisture so let's get uh the isotherms on here and then we'll see if we can get some data sometimes a 925 there's just not a whole lot of data there real strong thermal gradient over the panhandle say onshore flow 40 knots right there's a low level Almost a low-level jet, 40 knots. I mean, you figure 925 millibars, 2,500 feet just above that, hitting the 50-knot wind. Um, that reminds me, let's go look at the uh, vertical wind profile on radar shots, and we can see what kind of a... Uh, definitely got rotation right there. We can see what we got for um, any winds uh, veering with height, anything like that. So... Uh, Um, 
Hold on just a second. Come here. Good night, Precious. I love you. All right, so that's the granddaughter wants to say good night. All right, so onshore flow, 25 knots. Um, northerly wind over Arkansas. Like I said, definitely looking like some rotation right there. So we got the upper level support. Let's go uh, 24, 23, 8. So now we got a frontal boundary right there. So we definitely got a pretty good, it's almost vertical. Um, where that upper front is you separate those two temperatures and bring that warm front out so we got our warm sector down here bring the warm front out just off of texas into uh arkansas and then you go back to the surface so we'll just throw the front on there Show you where that was and if it's in about that same place we know we're pretty much vertical about 2500 feet so we're pretty close right there so even if that front the upper front was just behind this front then that's still a pretty steep slope so when you get that steep of a slope and it's pushing through or any of that warm moist air from the south is pushing up over that front it's hitting that steep slope and just plowing into it and then you're getting your real fast updraft just pushing up along that front so anything any weather along that front would just be right right actually along the front so if you had a shallow slope it would push up over that front higher before it got to the lifting condensation level and then become the the convection back behind it so if you, the steeper the slope the it's more like uh a snow plow going through and just plowing all the warm moist air and lifting it just rapidly and creating some massive instability real sudden and you can get the squall lines uh tornadoes thunderstorms all right so we'll get back to the radar <clears throat> that's pretty much what we're seeing here so i don't want to do that let's go Get my pointer back on here. So that's all over. This is all over Oklahoma. We've seen a lot of that front frontal boundary over Arkansas. So we're kind of back behind that a little bit further. Warnings all the way around this thing. We're just looking at that big low pressure system just developing right there. And then there's rotation and uh, southerly flow. Here's a northerly flow. Low level convergence. Southerly flow. Northerly flow, more low level convergence, stronger winds from the north, and just pushing down. And then so you got cold, colder air from the north pushing down, and then the warm moist air just overriding that right around, right along that line. <coughs> so if we did a pull this radar up, we are, let's find our radar here. Let me turn this off. And got all those surface plots on there too, so it's hard to see anything. Turn those off. There's our radar right in the middle of that warning area. So now if we do a let's see where we're at here. I'm trying to find a vertical wind profile if it's on this radar. I don't see it on this one. All right, I have to pull up another radar system. Then we can get an idea on that uh, on that radar and get back down here. We're at Oklahoma, and there's rotation on indicated right there. All severe warnings, no, no tornado warnings. It's like a flash flood warning. It's a pretty good cell right there. That's over Texas. Let's get over here. <clears throat> Let's get back to my other radar real quick. I'm, you're not seeing what I'm seeing just yet. Give me just a minute. I'm trying to get this thing set up. KINX, Tulsa, Oklahoma. 
Let me get to that radar. Let me get you guys on the right page. Okay. So now we got some rotation. There's a cell D6. It's a, the depth of that cell, 13,000 feet. Storm relative velocity, I guess, uh, 28%. Max relative velocity is 44 knots. All right. So. <coughs> let's go pull the uh let's go download this data play that loop there's a tornado warning to the south all right right there i think we covered that one and then let's go to the last cell and then i want to do find my vertical wind profile here we go now if you guys can see that one let me get you let's pull this one up okay now we're looking at the winds from the surface from the southeast the winds are actually backing a little bit with height right there if we get into this area this is a 0029 z 0059 we are at this is central time so Zero one, it's about zero Z, zero zero fifteen. That's back in here. But we do have not much veering with height. Um, so we start going up 30 knots, 30 knots, 35 knots, we're only five knots per maybe a thousand feet. That's some weak turbulence. I mean, not too impressed there. We look for upper level. Uh, with the winds veering with height, so if you're going from the south, like this one here, south, west, and then becoming more westerly as they go up, and then more northwesterly, then I'll say, yeah, they're veering with height, which that's got some weak veering. So that's uh, when winds veer, they speed, they speed and veer, they back and slow. So when they when they're veering like that, they're speeding, and then you get the stronger wind shear in the upper mid levels, and then you get that support for. Uh, rotation in the upper levels so let's get rid of that <coughs> I guess a pretty good uh <coughs> reflectivity on this radar we can't do any um this is a composite reflectivity I believe so <coughs> that's why we got there's a composite reflectivity so the other one's a base reflectivity I can't do cross sections on this I the base reflectivity um, we can do cross sections this is showing rotation here in the severe thunderstorm area so let's go back go back to our other radar and then now we're at our base reflectivity and then we can pull up uh, our volume scans and our cross sections so now we can see the structure of that thunderstorm. And that's uh, just right there close to the radar. So look at that. That's uh, pretty weak as far as because it's just so close. You can see it. The beam of the radar just shoots it up and takes their scans. That's pretty cool, but doesn't really tell us anything. All right. So I'm zoomed in pretty far. We got some hail over here, 0.97 inches in that area. That's right above. Uh, let me get rid of this again. Start dragging this screen, and I still have it set on my, my pointer set wrong. So we got a, with that hail right there. Okay, so now watch this. Let's see if we can. We are <laughs> in the lower angle of the radar. We go up, and you see that cell move. <clears throat> see it move to the west. All right, so we're all the way down. Moves to the west, then back over to the east. And then the high reflectivities disappear. So now you're getting those lower reflectivities disappear in the upper levels. So now that the center of that cell is going up. As we go up, then there's nothing there. So once we shoot way up into those higher angles of the radar, 
and the cell just disappears. So we did a cross section on this. Should be able to see how this has a tilt. So if you look at these overhang right here, that's once we start shooting up into that radar, we start getting into these these overhangs, and then you get out of them, and then that's why it looks like the cell moves. And see how it's angled at that. Let's go down this way. That's more vertical. But you see how that's angled, then you start the angle of that radar is just missing certain parts of that cell. And then that's why it looks like it's moving on the screen. But your hail, if you look at your hail, you know, that's to the south of that. Let's go back. We're in the stronger reflectivity is where your hail is. And then it starts to move out of the way, you know, in different areas because the angle of that radar is missing the reflectivities as it shoots up into those upper angles. All right, so pretty good strong line there. Um, some people are saying uh, something about a derecho coming through uh, straight line winds. Let me get rid of this. Try to get my point in here so I can drag around. We can look at this stuff. Um, that could still happen. There, that low pressure system, you know, it's a pretty intense low pressure system. So it start, it's going to have to push off. You have to get more well developed than that and then push off to get a derecho. You know, basically that squall line it pushes through and it just winds gusting so strong out of that, the head of that line. It's just straight line winds are just collapsing buildings. The uh, Bernoulli effect actually blows so hard on one side of the building, you actually create low pressure on the other side of the building and it'll just blow it apart. All right, so where's this at? Northern Louisiana. You got a little curvature right there. Pretty small cell. I mean, good reflectivities in the upper level, so. You know, push it all the way up to 30,000 feet. I mean, that's pretty intense for that small of a cell. So if we go to, uh, we got that little curvature right there. A little curvature right here. Like a little, trying to start a little hook echo thing. So we got a base velocity. Don't really see anything. I see the hail. Let me get rid of that again. I keep forgetting to change my pointer over. So radars to the west. All this red is out. All the green is in. So we can get up and take an upper. Probably got some rotation in the upper levels on that. Definitely call that one. And let's see where our tops are. Tops right there where that hail is <clears throat> about forty four thousand feet. Some red over here by this hail. We're at 52,000 feet when the echo top's there. So, let me go to uh, get some other volume scan on that. Fill in the volume here. Now we can see our overshooting tops 40 to 50,000 feet. fuzzy sharpen that up a little bit okay anyway I was looking for rotation more than anything let's go to the rotation all right come on there you go so we got rotation all over that cell low levels upper levels everything we got pretty good rotation everywhere
So that'd be one to keep an eye on right there. That's pretty intense, and it does have that curvature going to it. So, um, still no uh, tornado warnings. We got flash flooding. Let's go North Carolina. Flash flood warnings. Let's go back. Texas, severe. Come on, Speedy. All severe, some flash flood warnings. Mississippi. Got a pretty good line going through Mississippi. I don't think it's became as intense as uh, everybody thought it was going to be. Um, let's pull up some models real quick and uh, see what they're showing now. you guys on this page here and all right give you guys a good volume vis visual here all right storms over um, Arkansas went to Mississippi this is uh what time is this one zero Z this is about eight o'clock Eastern time so a little behind that's okay so now it gets a little more intense pushing into Mississippi northern Louisiana and then pushing into Alabama this is at 12 Z on Saturday so about eight in the morning Eastern time it'll be seven in the morning Central time Mississippi Alabama time and then that low pressure system you watch that pushing to the Northeast and then just kind of curves around and just pushes almost straight north. But then the cell just down at the bottom. This is why they're calling for that derecho. They were looking at, you know, the intensity of this, uh, that squall line pushing through there and just could become pretty intense. But you're looking at, that's 1 o'clock, uh, 2 o'clock in the morning, 1 o'clock central time. And so overnight tonight, yeah, you could probably, that could probably, as that low pressure system intensifies, then you could probably get that overnight uh, wind damage and then it pushes off in the Alabama and it pushes breaks off and it pushes south into the Gulf over the panhandle of Florida so then that low pressure system pushes to the north we get some convectivity wrap around moisture on that as it becomes occluded and then pushes to the north into over the Great Lakes region and Ohio gets some uh, rain showers <coughs> this is a uh, 18 Z so <coughs> That's about two o'clock. Um, probably maybe with the humidity we could, and a uh, little bit of rising temperature, we could probably see some convection in the Ohio Valley region. So let's keep an eye on that. This this uh, these models have been just back and forth here lately, and not really catching much. That's why let's see what happens in uh, North Carolina. There's some isolated cells. Nobody called for for tornadoes in uh, North Carolina and Virginia. <clears throat> and that was where we got the first warnings popped up. We had two or three tornado warnings pop up in uh, North Carolina and Virginia there, right along the border, the state lines. A um, little bit more convection pushing through the mountains in West Virginia. This is at uh, during 6Z. It'll be 2 o'clock in the morning Eastern time. A little bit of convection over uh, South Wisconsin, Northern Illinois. Just some isolated cells up there, but hey, there's isolated cells. You know that's what popped up in uh, Virginia, and North Carolina. So, and then you're on the backside of that low, <clears throat> so getting a significant lift, depending on to see where that occlusion is. <coughs> um, that occlusion is going to ride back behind that low, so the occluded front that's going what's going to cause that lift right there in uh, southern Wisconsin. So it definitely cause that convection. So if you get the uh, wraparound, all that moisture, and pulling off the Great Lakes region and feeding that backside of that low and with that uh, occluded front, you're getting them giving you the lift, depending on what your lifting uh, convective level is, then uh, you could definitely get some severe weather out of those isolated cells. 
something to keep an eye on there. Then that low pressure system just kind of pushes off to the north. Circles around, just wanders around there for a little bit. Looks like it's going to die out and pops back up off the east coast. With a pretty well defined frontal boundary pushing through there. And then that's, uh, looks like a frontal boundary has just dropped back. Let's see what we got here. High pressure out of the, kind of ridging down through the central United States. And then that frontal boundary just stolen over Florida. Be kind of stationary hanging out there. Then possibly another low pressure system developing along that stationary front. But that goes all the way to Texas. <clears throat> or another low pressure system coming out of Texas shooting across the Louisiana Mississippi, Alabama, and then Georgia all along the Panhandle, Florida, the southern states right there again, getting even more. So with the storms we're getting tonight, and then these storms coming through, this is uh, Saturday, April 17th. This is next week. So a little, we still got rain along, all along the Gulf. Any chance of uh, rain showers? This is tomorrow. And then next weekend, getting even more than your that ground's probably going to stay pretty saturated and you're getting this flash flooding right through here all along the Gulf states and then low pressure developing off the east coast of Florida and then that's going to follow the jet uh, Gulf stream up a little bit and shoot out over the Atlantic now another low pressure system here's one to keep an eye on now <clears throat> see what happens here low pressure develops over the Gulf all right that just pushes over across Florida and then off the east coast okay so now, these models are pretty far out. This is on the 20th. If this lower pressure system develops in the Gulf and then we get uh, any steering that brings this thing further north over inland into Gulf states, that thing could be pretty bad. So um, hopefully it just stays right off the coast there. So I mean, you're talking if that thing went over land, bringing a lot of moisture up there with it after forming over the Gulf, we look how intense it is right now. If that thing pushed straight north, then you could talk about it. Uh, pretty serious tornado outbreak from that but that looks like it shoots off the off the east coast and uh, we don't have to worry about that too much and then another low pressure system coming out of Colorado off the lee side of the mountains and then uh, warm air advection from the south and then that's pushing into southern Illinois all that convection and through uh, Kentucky eastern Kentucky and then the Ohio Valley region getting some rain most convection looking like it's staying south and then the low pressure system just kind of pushing back to the south with that high pressure coming out of the north and then once that high pressure gets it out of the north that just suppresses everything and clears everything out and then pushes that front off the east coast so this is well out on to the 25th of april 18z on a sunday so all right i'm going to go ahead and end this video here i want to say uh thanks for watching subscribe to my channel like this video share this video help me out and uh Visit my website, meteorology101.com, and stay tuned for more. Thanks again.